feel that they are losing faith in humanity does frighten me a little bit. So I was wondering how you um, keep going under those circumstances, and also if you still believe there's a realistic way to change China's policies towards Tibet. We cannot uh, completely lose uh, faith in humanity as long as we have faith in truth. Human community is uh, survived on the basis of uh, truth, so therefore we have to keep uh, faith in humanity. But at many times, particularly in the uh, so-called uh, modern civilized world, <coughs> people go by convenience and uh, they do not uh, care what injustice and what wrong things are happening around to them. Um, I was reading the newspaper a few years back and uh, a heading, very appropriate heading which starts my mind and that heading says, never mind human rights, money matters. <laughs> and uh, this uh, speaks the uh, mindset of the uh, uh, mindset of the uh, modern leadership of the nations. They are very good people in the grassroots, but uh, the leadership who matters, who uh, have the power to. Uh, uh, things to be done, they are only looking for uh, trade and economic gain. The totalitarian dictatorship of Beijing could not have been survived for such a long time until now, particularly after the disintegration of Soviet Union. China should have followed that pattern, but China survived until today and they are still planning for many hundred years to come to survive that kind of totalitarian region and uh, not caring for individual rights, individual freedom and the violation of human rights will continue because uh, China is considered to be a good market and uh, the market should be used and uh, we should not interfere what China is doing for their people. So this attitude is uh, very, uh, uh, very disturbing, very disheartening. In the beginning, there was a theory, uh, perhaps it was uh, invented and developed by uh, Dr. Kissinger, economic liberalization will uh, bring automatically political liberalization and uh, we must help China to uh, uh, grow, uh, to develop economically and uh, we need not to do anything for political liberalization. But uh, for the last uh, 40 years, China did develop economically, they become completely market oriented um, capital, capitalism, there is no more communism in China. but only. The governmental machinery remains in few person's hand and uh, that is cruel and that is uh, uh, unsympathetic uh, to uh, people and uh, the people of China has suffered a great deal. And uh, the Tiananmen Square massacre was uh, one, of the, uh, one of the unique things happened in uh, human history. And uh, the people uh, around the world uh, not able to uh, stop them for this kind of massacring. And uh, even today, for the last uh, three weeks, we are crying everywhere to save the Ngapakirti monastery from complete destruction. Uh, but uh, nothing had happened. Three people died, uh, killed and 300 monks have been uh, uh, arrested and disappeared and the rest of the uh, monastery was uh, 
completely cordon off and they are uh, um, short of uh, food articles, drinking water, everything. So this kind of torture in the 21st century, which is uh, uh, happening in front of the uh, world community, but uh, there's no nation, there's no organization, there's no association, there's no individual who can intervene and uh, save the people who are suffering. So this is a fact we have to, uh, uh, we have to accept. The, <coughs> the public will, the people's uh, inspiration uh, do not work all the times. Uh, if we look back few years before the Iraq war, in America, in Europe and everywhere, the public opinion was so strong against that war and the people tried their level best. Millions of people come out on the streets, but ultimately the people could not stop that. So very few people, uh, the power lies in their hand and then uh, the violence, destruction, uh, exploitation, all these things are happening there. So we shall have to uh, accept this reality and we shall have to think how to uh, change this reality. Otherwise the humanity may not be uh, able to survive for a long time. So it's a serious, serious question, serious matter. Each one has to think about it. That was my intention. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Emma. And regarding the nature of real knowledge, you said, the real knowledge of the thing is not subject to development. It is fully there from the time of its revelation, and it might be transmitted down to a certain point in the lineage, but then it begins to deteriorate. How can we maintain the true knowledge of the thing and prevent its deterioration? <coughs> If you achieve the perception of the truth, then there will not be possibility of deterioration. But uh, you do not have the perception of the truth. Your knowledge is uh, in the realm of thought. then uh, there is a danger of uh, deteriorating because uh, all the thought processes are limited. They are conditioned. And the thought does not uh, touch directly with the reality, with the truth. And thought only touches to the image of the truth. And when the thought trust to the image of truth, a person shall have to do continuous effort to uh, get through the image and reach to the real thing. And once you reach to the real thing, then your knowledge is uh, permanent, durable, and it can only grow, it cannot be deteriorated. So, the process of learning, process of education is uh, to reach to that, that level, direct contact with the uh, reality. Hi, my name is Noah and uh, you already touched on this a little bit, but we saw in an interview with uh, Donovan Robert, you said the human mind is completely conditioned. We need to move beyond these limitations of our conditioning and realize that our instruments are limited and that our minds can only go so far. How do you think we can move past this conditioning and limitation of our minds? I have no um, ready uh, method or technology. Each individual shall have to find that. First of all, you should not take uh, my words 
uh, as it is for granted. This is only expression of uh, my view. And uh, you need to examine it, whether uh, which I have said is uh, with the reality or uh, it is just my imaginary. Unless you examine it for yourself, uh, you can be carried away. If you uh, accept my words, and uh, then you will also be uh, uh, accept some other person's word, which might say completely opposite of which I have said. So both of these are not your knowledge. You are just uh, uh, depend on borrowed informations. So in the Buddhist learning process, uh, we say three stages. The first is hearing, the second is a contemplation, and the third is a meditation. Hearing means reading books or uh, learning from the teacher. You just, uh, uh, you just uh, accumulate the information. Then after accumulation of that information, then contemplation means you have to examine it for yourself. Whether this information is uh, correct according to uh, my analysis or it is false. When you find it is correct or it is false for yourself, then the not knowledge become your own. And until that knowledge is borrowed one, just information one. Then thereafter you concentrate on such thing which you discovered. And then your concentration, your meditation leads you to a direct perception of <coughs> that reality. And then you, you can say, I know it, I see it. So conditioning of mind, how to uh, get out of this conditioning, I think uh, the only way is uh, seriously and uh, uh, forcefully observe the, uh, the uh, forces and activities of the mind, particularly the thought. The thought goes uh, without any watch. If you have a, a watch, you have an observation to the process of your thought, then you will able to uh, see, you will able to listen, and uh, you will able to uh, touch <coughs> without interference of the thought and uh, you will able to reach to the uh, object by yourself without the judgment of or without the uh, naming of by the thought process. So Jiddu uh, Krishnamurti used to say that the truth is a pathless island and uh, you shall have to find for yourself how to reach there. So only uh, uh, outsider or any different individual only can say, see, observe, to become introwardly. And uh, if you are able to uh, silently, <coughs> undisturbingly able to see the thought process and the operation of your mind, only then you will be able to see the conditioning or the limitation. Once you see that limitation, then I think you need not any separate effort to uh, overcome it. Seeing itself is the antidote of the limitation. Hi, my name is Chelsea. You said